we introduce our guests. And this will be an introduction for all of us <laughs> right now, too, yes. because I'm totally in left field right now. Good morning. What's your name? Good morning. My name is Navanya Thomas. I'm the Interim Executive Director and CEO of the City of Martinsburg Housing Authority. Navanya, mm -hmm. nice Navanya, to meet you. Yes. Nice to meet Good you. Good to have you. And you are? Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm the executive assistant for Navanya. Very nice. Navanya and Samantha, welcome with us. In, uh, Martin Spring Housing Authority was yes. uh, what I was contacted about. And I know you've got a big event coming up. We do. And there's some other things as well. So tell me about the big event, Navanya. So on July the 20th, we're doing a, uh, what's the name of the event, Samantha? Community block party. It's a community block party where we're mm -hmm. trying to bridge the gap between the community and the housing authority. The housing authority has been kind of disconnected from the community for the last 10 or 15 years so we're just trying to embrace the community with helping us as far as like crime and just you know community resources uh, what is the mountain uh, martinsburg housing authority and what's its purpose so we are an income-based agency where we provide housing to local people based on their income we have 367 public housing communities i mean public housing units yes. as well as uh 350 section 8 what they consider housing choice vouchers throughout the city okay and, where and individual landlords can rent to be do you do you work state through federal how does it, it work? is a federally funded program yes all right and is the city of martinsburg involved at the local level not yet we've just started working with the city of martinsburg and, and well, how would you work through the city who would you work through specifically the mayor the mayor's office we work pretty closely with the mayor yes Okay, and then you get your federal funding through HUD. Through HUD. Mm -hmm. Okay, and to do that, do you work through the local congressional representative, Alex Mooney, or the the senators, or do do they not even get involved in this? So that would be way above my pay grade, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but generally we're um, given subsidies each year mm -hmm. that we kind of split up amongst the residents that we have. Okay, mm -hmm. so. In regards to the amount of money you have available to you, mm -hmm. does it vary year to year? Does it stay fairly consistent? It fa it stays fairly consistent for the public housing units. So for public housing, these are people who live in what's considered a project, which mm -hmm. is just the community. The housing choice vouchers fluctuates the most because that money is based on how many people actually need housing versus the housing that we already have. Public housing is fixed. We have five communities. They're never going to go anywhere. That's all we have. Mm -hmm. Based on the fair cloth law, we can't add any affordable housing communities there. But with the Section 8, the housing choice vouchers, we can continue to add as the need increases. So we can't, you said under that the fair cloth, mm -hmm. you can't add, so we couldn't, you know, build another, you know, low-income senior housing building or something like that in city limits. It couldn't be public housing, no. It would have to be project-based and the reason What's the for, difference? Okay. The reason for that, public housing is based on income. So the average rent for a public housing unit would only be $360. Okay. Right? So if you have 100 of those, you're not going to make a lot of money. But if you have project-based, then the payment standards are a lot higher. The project-based standard for one bedroom is like $1,080. There's the difference right there. You can make a lot more money. You could build a lot more with project-based units than you could public housing. So, but we're, so we're not allowed to build any more public housing? We could not build public housing, but we could build affordable housing. Okay. Okay. And affordable housing is subjective because affordable housing in Martinsburg might be different than affordable housing cost-wise in Beckley, West Virginia. That's true, yes. Because the cost of living is so much higher around here. What is, what is considered to be affordable in Martinsburg? A rent amount. Ooh. So our rent is based on what they would consider fair market value, which is where they take the rent for everything in the area and they kind of come up with an average. This is the average one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and that's kind of what we base the rent on. But of course, for our residents, it's based on their income. 30% of their income is all we're allowed to take. I so see. it doesn't matter what the rent is in the area for us. If you bring in a thousand dollars, your rent's only going to be three hundred bucks. It doesn't really matter what's going on in the area. And then does HUD make up the rest of that subsidy yes, to the landlord? Yes, that's what the subsidy is. HUD pays the difference. However, with public housing, there is no difference. It's a flat rent amount. If it's three sixty, it's three sixty. You see the difference in how you lose the money. Mm -hmm. With the other subsidies, with the HCV vouchers, then there's a much bigger gap. H, what does HCV stand for? Housing Choice Voucher. Okay. That's a Housing Choice Voucher, which means we can give you a voucher to go anywhere in the city and find you a home as long as the landlord will rent to you. 
and so, as long as it falls within the payment standard. So the housing, <clears throat> excuse me, the housing authority is not the landlord. The, no, no. And does the money from the, the, that's paid out does it go directly to the landlord? Or does yes. it go to the, okay? It goes to the landlord. So. For example, if you had a house for rent that was $1,500, you could say, I'm going to put this house on Section 8. The resident portion may only be 250 and then HUD is going to pay the rest. And is that renewable? I mean, say somebody moves into something, they they find a, a place for $1,200, mm-hmm. and their, their income says they're going to pay 400 of it, and the housing voucher pays the rest. How long is the voucher guaranteed for? I mean, is it guaranteed for a year, and then they have to renew and there's a chance they couldn't that the voucher wouldn't renew and they'd have to change, you know, places they live. The only way the voucher would not renew is if one, the resident had an egregious lease violation where we had to say this is it, or the landlord decides not to renew. Outside of that, they keep the voucher pretty much for life unless they uh, start making more money or something. Right. Okay. But the but the standards for income is pretty high. How do people find out about your services and qualify? So they can come directly to the Housing Authority, which is located which where? is at 703 Porter Avenue in Martinsburg, West Virginia, or they can go to our website, which is www.martinsburghousingauthority.org, and also do an application there. If I am a landlord, how do I get on your list of landlords who are looking for tenants? Mm-hmm. The exact same way. They could just come by the Housing Authority, do an application, and then, of course, we have to inspect the home to make sure the house meets our how often do you in, do you inspect them once somebody's in do you inspect every year every, every single months? year we have to do an inspection of the home and generally speaking do most people stay in compliance or is there a lot of work that needs done most people stay in compliance because the residents will call us if things get out of line if the washer is not working if it's supposed to doors not you know they mm-hmm. call us pretty quickly and I, I've been in those buildings. I, I own a Medicare insurance agency here in Martinsburg, so I deal with a lot of the seniors, the building on Porter Avenue and the building right behind South. I've okay. got a lot of clients there. And I tell you, I, I go into a lot of places and a lot of towns, and those buildings, you guys do a very good job of keeping them up and keeping them safe, and it seems like a really – it, it, they're they're good places. They're they're a community, and it's. Um, I just want to say you guys do a very nice job. I appreciate that. Right now, we are working on redeveloping both of those elderly high rises because they haven't been redeveloped in so long. So that's where we're going right now with our five year agency plan. I've got a question for you from Charlotte Norris on our Facebook comment section. She asks, "How can the number of housing choice vouchers be increased, Navanya? The number is increased basically by community need. So we go into what's considered a shortfall. So if we have 350 units, and let's just say we start on a regular basis getting an influx of people needing housing, then HUD will increase the amount of money that we get. Is it a, is it a difficult process to get HUD to do that? I mean, does it take them a long time, or do you have to jump through, I mean, a lot of hoops? And are there times where HUD says no? No, not generally, because our money is increased each year. So HUD, what HUD does is they look at exactly what we've spent the previous year to determine how much more money we may need. Okay. So, no, we don't generally have to jump through hoops. I have nice. two comments that say Martinsburg needs at least uh, one, maybe two uh, housing authority high-rise buildings. Are there any plans for those in the we future. have two high rises. What type of high rises outside of elderly communities? Doesn't say. Just okay. just need two the more. two high rises that we have right now were elderly, but we just switched those over to multifamily. So anyone can live there now. Okay. okay. So total, we have five communities here in Martinsburg. Uh, David Anderson, who ran for city council recently, said uh, homelessness is a big issue in Martinsburg. Does the housing authority address that issue? We are beginning to address that issue now because we are redeveloping. So even though we can't create any more public housing units, we can create project-based communities where we make it go by a small community of 100 units. And as long as we make them project-based, meaning you have to live here, you can't take your voucher with you, we can increase our unit size that way, which is what we plan on doing within the next five years. You plan on, on purchasing or, or building a new community? Whichever one seems the most feasible. Nice. Very <laughs> so nice. Right now, we're just trying to increase the number of units that we have so that we can service more people. Do I typically sign a one-year lease? Yes. So let's say three months into my lease, I get a better job. Mm-hmm. And maybe I get one of those gigs at Procter & Gamble, and I'm making forty-five, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 with shift differential and overtime and all that good stuff. 
does my rent increase or does it stay the same for the entire year of the lease? Your rent will increase. Now, HUD used to have something called um, earned income disallowance, which said if you didn't work for a year and then you got a job, we're not going to count your income for that first year to give you time to get back on your feet. Mm -hmm. Now, that's going away, but usually, no, your rent would just increase too. So it's something where if it's it's in your lease, in your contract, that if all of a sudden your income goes up, mm -hmm. you don't wait till the end of the lease period to tell you guys you're they're required to tell you, you immediately. Know, immediately. Yes. Okay, that's good. And then we give them like a 60-day notice generally for the increase of rent. Is there a long waiting list of people waiting to, to get involved with the program? You... No. I would have to say it's kind of weird, but no, we don't have a huge waiting list. I think on our public housing waiting list, we have maybe 210 people. And on the housing choice voucher waiting list, we have about 400, which okay, sounds like a that lot. That seems like that's, a lot. Yeah, I mean, we're a city of, like of 20,000. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's a, that's a decent-sized percentage of our community. It would be from your vantage point but if you work in the office you understand you might call 30 people numbers disconnected i don't live here anymore we can't reach them so that 210 goes down to 35 <laughs> real quick <laughs> I so yeah, of it like yeah. That. so so many people move as they're waiting on these yeah. on the waiting list i mean you might be here this year and you might move to california and love it decide not to come back get a job you don't need it so typically we should have about four times the amount of units that we have on the list. so is there when we see the homeless problem with the people who are, who are homeless in Martinsburg. Is there a reason, a th in hypothetical theoretical reason, why any one of those would not qualify for housing in, with, within the housing authority? A homeless person? Yes. So the barriers that we see the most often are not having ID. A driver's license, a birth certificate, a social security card, things that they have to have in order to qualify. Those are most of the barriers that we see. So we did have, we did hire Samantha, who is my executive assistant, but she's also resident services, so that she can go out into the community and help people who may want to apply but can't apply because they have these barriers. Maybe she could help them take them to social security, get their ID, things like that, so that they can qualify for housing. But that's one of the biggest barriers for homelessness. It's just I've moved. I lost everything. I don't know where it is now. And so HUD has uh, prerequisites where you have to have these things in order to apply. Navanya, is the uh, guidelines for rent, is that, does that take into account the individual's income or the entire household's income if it's a multi-person unit? It's the entire household income. Everybody's income. Mm -hmm. Unless right. outside of children who are 18 and foster kids. Uh, what would be the reasons for eviction to, to break a one-year lease in a situation like that? Reasons for eviction? Yeah, the tenants. If they, if they can't pay the rent, is there is there any kind of subsidy if some tragedy happens and you can't pay your rent for a couple of months, for instance? Or they're not you paying out? the rent. I thought the rent was going from the government. They're paying at least 30%. 30%. Yeah. Okay. 30% of their income. Right, but there are instances where people do lose a job. Or and but then their rent goes down to zero. So very few times do people just get kicked out because they just don't want to pay. Mm -hmm. Most of the times it's something else. I mean, they get kicked out if there's nef there are nefarious activities going on in their place, right? You know, drugs, stuff like that. Right. Or if all of a sudden they've got eleven people living in there, right? And it's you know supposed to be one or two, right? And evictions are always our last resort. Like we don't want to evict anyone. It's hard enough to find places, and so that's why we're trying to collaborate with the city because the city has something called a community block grant where they have money to right. be able to assist with things like this. So now we're going to collaborate with them, try to get some of that money to be able to pay rent for people who can't pay because, again, eviction is our last resort. Uh, Navanya, we've got about uh, two and a half minutes left here, so let's mm -hmm. talk about the big event once again, the block mm -hmm. party. If you could, tell everybody when it is, where yep. it is, and what to expect. It's going to be July the 20th at Ambrose Park. And we're basically calling out all community resources. So we know we have a huge drug epidemic here in Martinsburg. So we want drug resource centers. We want social services. We want the police, the fire department, food pantries, domestic violence centers, 
anybody that's willing to come and help bring community resources so that the people in the community know where they can go when they need help. That's the whole purpose of the event. It's on July the 20th from 10 to 1 at Ambrose Park. We, uh, my agent, I have, I have an insurance agency here in town. We work with Medicare. We work with That'd health insurance. We work with low-income seniors and low-income people. Currently working with a lot of people who have just gotten kicked off Medicaid and have needed health insurance. Um, and we've been working to find them find them affordable health insurance through the Obamacare stuff. Oh, that'd be great. So, I mean, we, we would love to participate in Oh, that'd in be this. great. So, yeah, you're invited. All right. <laughs> you're invited. But I also wanted to bring up that we do have some needs. We are taking non-cash mm -hmm. sponsored items for, like, food and drinks, tents, tables, coolers. We need a bouncy house, people to do face painting for the kids, things of that nature. We can't accept any cash, but any non-cash uh, donations we're willing to accept. Um, you need a bouncy house. You could have some electricity Are you nearby. Well, our, to plug well in? our community is across the street. Yeah, so, so yes, yeah, we have it. Yeah, run a very long extension <laughs> very cord, long Rob. Extension cord, <laughs> about about block long extension yeah. cord. That'd be about ten of them. Uh, Lavanya, how do people get in touch with you to, if they have some questions? They just heard this segment and they've got some interest. Of course, you can email me. My email is n thomas at martinsburg h a dot org. And is there a phone number to reach you at work? People might uh, be able to call Samantha. You can call me at 304-671-4838. One more time on the number, Samantha. 304-671-4838. I thought you had taken a vow of silence after you walked <laughs> in, so appreciate <laughs> you chipping in on that one. We'll reach out. We'll reach out to you. Yes. Thank uh, you. Today or tomorrow, we'll get you. We, we definitely want to be a part of that. Thank you. Thanks thank you, for having thank us. Thank you both yeah. for coming in. And I wish you the best of weather on July the 20th. <laughs> Thank you. You are welcome. Hopefully it's like today and not like it was this weekend. 400 degrees. <laughs>